Hello, it's Scott Manley here and today we're following up with part two of my tutorial on aircraft design. So, we're going to actually build an aircraft now that takes off from the runway. So, uh, I'm going to add fuel and a rocket engine. In this case, I'm going to use a rocket engine right now. We'll get into jet engines later, uh, but right now I'm going to use a rocket engine because this uh, aerospike is nice and efficient. It burns through fuel more quickly, provides a nice thrust to mass ratio, but more importantly, does not provide thrust vectoring. So we're going to be still talking about controls using only the... Um, using only the wing surfaces, and that's me adding a, an action group to disable. Let me, I added it to stage, yes, yeah, so when I stage I will disable my uh, cockpit control. So uh, underneath this we're going to have to add some landing gear of course, and we'll just stick out uh, the kind of landing gear that you would want if you were uh, flying a rocket. You would want a nice wide base here, so I'm going to stick that there. And we'll try and make it nice and level, I guess. So we'll stick a couple there. Using, uh, of course, symmetry. So that should be nice and level, and that provides a nice base for our aircraft. So we can bring up the center of mass, and the uh, center of lift obviously doesn't exist at this time. We'll put on a simple canard for a simple uh, winglet for a tailplane, just so that we have something. So we have a vertical stabilizer that will help us fly correctly add in a pair of delta wings and we're going to put this more or less right over the center of mass because uh, that is where you know everything pivots around and uh, now we're going to add a pair of tailplane, a pair of control surfaces on the back and of course you have to press A or D to make these rotate the correct way. So that is a basic aircraft and uh, you see that we've moved the center of lift back a little. Let's see how well this flies. And here we are, throttle up and go! So Leonard Kerman is our uh, victim, sorry, uh, test subject. Now you see I'm pulling back using the S key. This thing is not lifting off. Uh, and there's a reason for this. The reason is that uh, if I just pause this, maybe, maybe if I just move this and pause it, what I do when I pull up is that flap is deflected upwards and that means it pushes downwards here. Now, the thing is, the landing gear is there, so we are we have landing gear here and here, so the force is spread equally between them. There is no force that is lifting me upwards. Now, I can push downwards, maybe, and... Oh, there, I just got off the runway, thankfully. Uh, without that lip at the end of the runway, I would have died, basically. Uh, <laughs> there is That would not have worked particularly well, but uh, we actually have a flying aircraft, and that will you know, more or less follow a reasonable flight path. And it is actually relatively stable, does not lose stability at any time. But of course, the way that we fix this is we'll go back to the space plane hangar and fix this. Okay, so to make this actually work as an aircraft, the force coming down from these needs to run through a fulcrum, as they say. So by picking the rear undercarriage and moving it forwards just a little, uh, that means that this should push down and it should pivot around this and hopefully the tail should or the tail should go down and the front should go up Okay, ready to launch with this uh, new modified undercarriage flap combination get up to speed and We're kind of pulling back. Oh Yes, barely barely Okay, so we are actually flying here and this actually is a relatively good aircraft. It's actually going to be stable because uh, the, the center of lift is actually quite far back, although the fuel being depleted is shifting the center of mass back as well, but we should be able to fly this thing relatively well. Anyway, uh, let's go back and we'll talk about another variation on this. Now, that's a more traditional aircraft. You have the flaps at the back pushing down, but you can... Uh, actually do the reverse you can put canards on the front to lift the nose up and then you're not you don't have to worry about this whole fulcrum thing now, I've obviously pushed this wave back forward but uh, if you'd notice yeah I've shifted the center of lift forward so let's slide this back and then slide these canards back a little canards are basically like little wings that actuate and because we've moved this so far back, we can actually take this undercarriage and slide it back as well. 
And that makes it slightly safer during takeoff because when you pitch up, there's less chance that you'll smack your engine into the runway. Okay, let's see how well this flies. And actually, yeah, let's see how this flies. Launch. Okay, here we are with the Mark II using the wings at the front, or the canards, to lift the nose up, and you'll notice this thing goes up almost instantly. Brilliant. We can pretty much come into a vertical climb from this. Not bad, huh? We are going to get uh, up, 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 because the thrust of that engine will help us uh, fly excellently. Now, uh, one thing to note here is that the fuel is burning from the front tank and not with the rear tank, right? So if I try to control this, what's ha what starts to happen is it becomes unstable. And there we go, we've moved into an unstable state because the center of mass has moved backwards and it's actually very hard for me to fly anything here. So if you're quick, you can transfer fuel out of this, out, 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 no, sorry, in, 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 yes, let's get that correct. By pushing the fuel forwards, this should hopefully uh, make the aircraft stable again and let me fly it once more. Let's, uh, I keep forgetting which way to go, this way, this way, in, in, okay, oh no. Come on, get stable, get stable. There we go, that's that's better, look at that. There, so now we have the center of mass shift far enough forward that we have regained control of this aircraft. Really, this is a very bad thing to have to do if you have to do it, but uh, the, the lesson here is to make sure that your aircraft dynamics work regardless of how much fuel you've been burning. And uh, hopefully I could actually bring this around and land it. I'm just going to nosedive it down so that we can actually uh, gain control. Obviously, if this happened closer to the ground, you would have a much harder time keeping control long enough to um, actually land it or pump the fuel around. It would be nice to have action groups associated with, the, with pumping fuel and things like that. I would uh, seriously like to see that sometimes. There's some air rockets that I could make stable if I could control the pumping of fuel back and forth. Or you could even steer some rockets by uh, pumping the fuel back and forth. That would be an interesting challenge. And we're down and brakes. So there we have a recovery from an unstable aircraft just by understanding how mass distribution works. But yeah, if we go back to uh, the hangar, we can of course uh, fix this problem by shifting the center of mass back a little further. It's our center of lift. And let's just do that here. Uh, center of lift center of mass. You've got to figure out just how far back this thing is going to go and uh, you know, move the wings far enough that it will help, I guess. There, so those uh, canards add quite a bit of lift at the front as well. They really do tend to make the aircraft unstable and that's just something you, you're going to have to fight quite a bit. Obviously, the other thing to do here would be instead of having two tanks to have one single tank. Um, obviously, I set it up this way. Anyway, uh, that's that's all about uh, getting off the runway. There's another thing you can do to help get off the runway, and that is to start with an aircraft which is naturally pitched up. You can pitch up the whole body of the aircraft just by shifting the landing gear around, and that should make it more or less lift off without me touching any keys. Let's try that. I'm obviously using tri uh, tricycle landing gear here. There are other types of landing gear you can use. Right, okay, so I'm just going to press T, and yes, the thing just launches all on its own, because I've naturally put that uh, put that incline into its uh, airframe. So uh, then, of course, you'll still have to worry about stability problems and all that, but that's another way to uh, deal with getting off the air, off this runway. And uh, finally, if you don't want to tilt the aircraft, and I should have probably saved my old design where I had everything all nicely balanced. Uh, balance there. Switch this forwards. And switch this here. That's more or less. Let's uh, let's get rid of these. Let's do something that has a uh, you know slower wing design. Let's see. And what I'm gonna do? No is there. Pitch the wings themselves. Now let's take a look. Center of lift, center of mass. Oh, okay, that's definitely wrong. Center of lift. Uh, yeah, let's just shift that here. 
I'm more or less guessing where this should be. This is a really bad idea. I'll I'll put tailplane on this as well. No, you cannot. He's not wanting me to work here. Okay, so, and actually, I can take these and I can pitch them. No, I can pitch them down a little, by naturally. So, what we have here is a pitched wing design instead. I'm going to try and rotate these flaps. You know what? Okay. I should have probably pitched the wings after I attached the lift, the control surfaces. Because when you do the, when you have control surfaces that are naturally pitched, you can get into all sorts of stressful situations. Okay. So they have 15 degree tilt to those main wings. And that should actually help us lift up off the runway without me doing anything either. Right? Let's try that. Okay. Press T for this, uh, for stability control. I'm hopefully not going to have to touch anything. Just let the standard stability control do its business. And there we go. Lifting into the sky with the help of uh, inclined wings. That's another possibility. It's more common to see that in... Uh, you'll see that in, in aircraft on Earth that use... Uh, are slower, let's say. They use these. So that's another possibility. In Kerbal Space Program, uh, wings do not generate any lift unless they are inclined to the airstream, right? It's not like the real world where you have a curved wing surface that generates lift in one direction. The Kerbal wings right now are really simple flat slabs. Um, so there we go. Well, and we could probably land this thing if we wanted, but I'm not going to. Now, in my previous video, there was uh, another couple of things that I missed. One was... Uh, mounting the wings higher up. Now, this is a this will actually allow something called the keel effect. And let's just put these on here. Um, also, I should note that you know if you don't want to add full canards at the front, you can actually just add a pair of little uh, flaps there. It looks weird, but they will actually function and help you lift off. Let's see how this works. Okay, we have the wings higher up in the wing. Uh, the wings higher up in the body. And that, you see how these in front of the center of mass deflect down and these come back? There we go. So this, uh, this thing, if I bring it up now, and then I roll, oh, okay, let's just, let's just fly it as a glider. So I'm turning it sideways, pulling uh, up against the thing, and yeah, it doesn't actually show the effect particularly well. Oh, there we go. Okay. So this is more or less, I'm trying to fly this in a circle, right? And with the wings high up, what happens is you get something called the keel effect, right? Now, the keel effect is rather like the keel of a ship. It is pulling the wings, it, because the center of mass on the wings, uh, or on the body, is below the center of mass on the wings, we uh, tend to restore back towards the... Uh, it tends to pull the body upright again. And... Oh my goodness! That was such a... Such a lucky landing. Okay. Land! Let's see if I can land. Little heavy. Little heavy, but we did it. <laughs> so that's the keel effect. That's what happens when the center of mass is below the center of lift. You will have a natural kind of pendulum effect keeping you more or less stable, in theory. Uh, it works with a dihedral effect, and you'll find that aircraft do both. And obviously, if you do the reverse, the aircraft becomes less stable. Anyway, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned stuff. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.